Hello and welcome to Trans West Truck Trailer RV in Frederick, Colorado. I'm Brian Ritz. Today we're going to have a little bit of fun and we are going to take this brand new 2023 Renegade Classic 38 CSB on a road test. So the plan right now is we're going to take it from the dealership to Golden, Colorado. In Golden, Colorado, we're going to jump on Highway 6, which is going to be a nice two-lane windy mountainous road up to Blackhawk, Colorado. From Blackhawk, we're going to jump onto I-70. And we're going to bring I-70 eastbound across a couple mountain passes, show you what this coach is going to do going uphill, show you what it's going to do going downhill, and just overall a good driving experience of the 2023 Renegade Classic. Thank you guys so much, and we'll get started shortly. Super C's literally thousands of miles across Colorado, into Utah, Oklahoma, all over the country really. Uh, you just don't get a ride like you do in the Cascadia P4 chassis. So right now we are probably on the worst part of this drive. We're on I-70 just about to the base of the mountains where they don't like to do road work for some reason. We've got bridge seams, we've got massive dips in the road, plus traffic, plus rain, snow, wind. Um, so just a bad part of the ride. But as you can see from looking at me, this coach, this chassis handles it like a champ. Really, I don't have to fight this thing. I can just kind of point it in a direction and it's gonna go there. I don't have to white knuckle it and hold onto this wheel at all times. It really helps with that driver fatigue, especially for those of you who are gonna be doing long haul drives on a regular basis. This is the chassis to have for those drives. So we just came through Golden, Colorado. We're heading for I-70. We're gonna start our ascent up into the mountains, starting with Floyd Hill. Now Floyd Hill is a pretty fun one. It's a very long, not the steepest grade in the world, but it is a long pull up that hill. And it's really gonna show us what this DD13 is capable of. So we're excited to get started on that. So during this video, I've said quite a few times that this coach is built on the Cascadia P4 chassis. But let's talk about what a Cascadia P4 chassis actually is. So it is a chassis built by Freightliner. It is their best selling over the road heavy duty chassis. It's probably the best selling chassis on the over the road truck market right now. Uh, this particular one is equipped with the DD13, which is a 505 horsepower, 1,850 foot-pounds of torque, which is going to be fun to show you guys while we're going up and down these hills. Now, where this is going to separate us from our M2s, which you see on most of your, most Super Cs are going to be built on M2s, um, is we get this Cascadia cab. Now, in my opinion, this cab is a lot more comfortable and a lot more ergonomic than what you get in those M2s. This wing dash so that my gauges and everything are looking at me, rather than me having to look over at them, really helps a lot. It makes my situational awareness better because I can look down, see what I need to, and have my eyes back on the road in just a quick second. We are on the first climb on I-70 West heading up into the mountains here. So while we're doing this video, I just want to make a disclaimer here. I am not a professional driver by any means. I'm not a driving instructor. Um, I'm just a guy who has driven a lot of coaches across these mountains. Uh, so in some of these videos you see of test drives, things like that, you see guys saying that you need to manually shift these units, which you can absolutely do if you want to. Um, I'm not going to kid myself and think that I'm smarter than the engineers at Allison Transmissions who have designed this transmission to perform at its peak level no matter the road conditions. So here's how I do it when I drive across the mountains. When I hit the base of these hills, I make sure my cruise control is set and I just let the chassis do its thing. I let that engine and transmission work together. They are very well tuned together and I just let it do its thing. Am I going to reach the hill at the same or the top of the hill at the same speed that I started at? No, probably not. Now in one of these smaller units with a big engine, we do pretty well. So I set the cruise at 57, 58 miles an hour. Uh, we're climbing the hill. It's turning about 1200 RPMs right now, and we are at 55 miles an hour. But driving these coaches, I'm not in a race. You know, I'm 34,000 pounds as I sit right now. I don't need to be going 65, 75 miles an hour up this hill. So I don't see a reason to shift this thing by myself. So 
climbing the hill here into the mountains and this coach has done an amazing job of maintaining 55 miles an hour all the way up um, without me doing anything other than having the cruise control set. Now, I've driven Class A's across these mountains quite a few times as well. Um, and some of the things that I really like about Super C's over Class A's is one, we've got safety here. So if I were to get in a front end collision right now, there is that engine, there's frame rails, there's bracing up in front of me that's gonna beat me to the accident. The other thing I love about them is it's a lot more natural feeling to drive, especially for those of us that drive pickups on a daily basis. You know, it feels like I'm just driving a pickup. I'm not sitting in front of my axles. Um, you know, I'm sitting kind of back. I've got nice big mirrors that let me see everything around me. Just feels more like a pickup rather than driving a bus. Now, the other thing, and this is my opinion, uh, but I think that they actually ride a little bit nicer when you get into these bumps. Class A's are great for that kind of highway flat driving. Um, I think Super C's, when you get into this rougher roads of mountains, I think they drive nicer. I think they're more planted on the ground because of the weight on this front end. And then when we hit these bumps, you don't get that rebounding shock that you get on Class A chassis with uh, air ride front suspension. So we're gonna do a little test here. So we are doing about 30 miles an hour right now, and it's not because that's what we're limited to. We're stuck behind some trucks climbing a 6% grade. Now, there's gonna be a break here in just a second, and we're gonna get over, and we're gonna go around these trucks. So from 30, climbing 6%, we're up to 34, 37, 39, 40. And again, I'm not doing anything just uh, other than just accelerating, hitting the gas. So 6% grade from 30, we're rolling through 45, 47, 50, and I'm gonna go ahead and set the cruise at 50. Now, we're gonna continue climbing this grade. So this might be kind of a boring segment here, but I just want you guys to see kind of what this DD13 is capable of. So I set the cruise control at 50, and we're just gonna climb, cruise control set, um, and see how far we drop while climbing this hill. I don't think we're actually gonna drop at all, but it's a good test. I don't really know how else to show it. Um, you know, if I had an M2 video, I'd send you over there to see that, where we would drop probably five to 10 miles an hour pretty easily climbing up here. Uh, now, while we're doing this and I have some time, I want to bring up something that I forgot to mention when I was talking about Detroit Assurance Package, and that is going to be a blind spot assistance over on my passenger side. Now, something that's a little funky about driving the Cascadia chassis is we're so tall up here that seeing out the passenger side directly down is a little tricky. Now, we have a couple ways that we mitigate this uh, or the dangers there. One, we have the hood mirror on the right side. Now, that hood mirror gives us a great view of the entire bottom side of the right side of this truck. We also have a mirror over on the passenger side window that looks basically straight down at the road. Okay, just to interrupt this for a second, we're cresting this hill and we're still doing 50. We never lost a mile an hour there. Um, but anyways, the other thing we have is a blind spot monitoring on the passenger side of this vehicle. So there's a little triangle built into the A pillar there. Now that A or that triangle lights up when there's someone in that blind spot. Now also, if I were to turn my blinker on and there was someone over there, I would get an audible warning alerting me that there's someone there and I need to be careful and look before I merge. So great safety feature there. All right, we're gonna go ahead and just start descending the hill. So again, I'm gonna do my little trick here. Engine brake on medium and then shift her down into fourth gear and we're just gonna let it slow it down or let the uh, engine brake slow us down as we descend this hill. Now this one's a little bit steeper going this way than the other way so I'm actually gonna kick us on the engine brake on high. Also started a little faster than I normally would have. But again um, you can kind of see my knee over here it's nowhere near a brake pedal. Now 55 miles an hour is where we're at right now slowing down we're at 54 and it's just gonna slowly but surely slow us down and it's gonna do it smooth enough to where it is a comfortable deceleration rather than a very abrupt one and we have reached the bottom basically so we went from 60 to 50 down a hill just by shifting down into fourth gear and leaving it on a high engine brake now 
I don't get to drive a whole lot of coaches with DD13s. There's just not a lot of them out there. Usually they're gonna have a Cummins ISL or an ISX. So this is a little bit of an experimentation for me. Um, but from what I've kind of learned while driving, I don't think I really even need to shift this particular coach down. Um, I think that the engine brake on this DD13 is powerful enough that I don't have to worry about it. And I don't think I've even mentioned it yet, but this is a three-stage engine brake. So you get high, medium, and low. Um, high in terms of flat ground and just regular driving is probably a little bit on the excessive side um, for what our normal users are going to be doing if you're towing big trailers then yeah it's absolutely worth it but that medium seems to be just a kind of happy spot uh, where you get good deceleration but not excessive to the point where you have to hit the gas again to speed back up so a question we get asked a lot as salesmen is when it comes to these bigger coaches, the big Super C's, the big Class A's with the GVWR of above 26,000 pounds with air brakes and air ride suspension, all this stuff. Um, do I need a CDL, a commercial driver's license, to operate one of these? Now, it's kind of a yes and no answer. In Colorado, there is no special license required to operate an RV. Um, you can do it with just a standard driver's license, no endorsements, no CDL, no anything. Now, there are certain states that require you to get a CDL or an air brake endorsement, or just there's a couple different kinds of licenses that you can get, um, and it's all on a state-by-state -state basis. So you can at, or you can Google it on your state, you can ask your DMV, um, that's gonna be the best way to get that answer. Now, even though the majority of states do not rec or do not require you to get a CDL, I still absolutely recommend going through some kind of driver training. Um, even if it's just an old retired truck driver who is going to do a two-day course for you, who has been in the mountains, who has driven coach or trucks and uh, big vehicles with big GVWRs and air brakes, you know, learning how to deal with emergencies, learning how to slow these things down, how to. Uh, maintain speeds, doing all this stuff, it is absolutely crucial that you learn how to do it before you're in a situation where you have to and have no idea what you're doing. So long and short of it, no CDL required in Colorado. Some states require them, um, but get your driver training in. It is absolutely worth it. Save yourself and save the other people on the road with you. So another thing to consider when you're buying an RV, especially for us Colorado guys who are gonna be driving them across the mountains and the potential to drive them across the mountains in the winter when there's snow and everything. Now in Colorado, crossing I-70 from September all the way until March, I believe, maybe even April, um, commercial vehicles are required to carry snow chains um, in the event that you need extra traction. Now, technically this is not a commercial vehicle, but you're still gonna to wanna to have some kind of assurance. Now, personally, I would not put snow chains on an RV. Um, the potential for them to come off and cause damage to your undercarriage, damage to your body panels, that kind of stuff, uh, would be enough to make me not wanna do it. And I would go for snow socks. So snow socks are kind of the same idea as snow chains, but they are kind of a soft, clothy material with some uh, metal wiring in between or built into them. So they provide you that extra traction without having to worry about them coming off and damaging the exterior coach. Now on these Super C's, we do have the option to put auto chains onto them and that's gonna be an actual mounted chain system that's underneath the coach. You would flip a switch in here and basically they drop down and they just spin around really fast and they catch your tires as your tires spin. Really mitigates the risk of them coming off. I've done it on a couple Super C's um, and we just do it right there at our TransWest shop in Frederick, Colorado. So one thing I love about the Super C's that we carry being the Numars and the Renegades is they use proportional wheelbases to the length of the coach. So what that means is depending on the length of the coach is gonna uh, determine what length of wheelbase we're gonna get. Now, we just showed you a right hand turn. I don't have to swing this coach out really, really far to avoid running my rear wheels over you know, a curb or 
uh, if there's no, or a curb, or if there's, you know, a pothole or something, I don't have to swing real wide, and I don't have to worry about a massive tail swing that can come around and strike something on the opposite side of me. Now, we just got off of I-70 West, and we are going up into Central City, or Black Hawk, Colorado. So this is kind of a cool older mountain town. It was a mining town at one point in its life. Now it's kind of a tourist attraction. We've got a couple casinos and things like that up here. But this is a fairly fun part of this drive. It's a nice windy mountainous road. Kind of a constant grade going up. I'm not gonna push this truck too hard. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of gas. I'm maintaining 40 miles an hour. It's a 45 zone. Nice big curve here. Now, in mountain driving in motorhomes, what I've learned is slow and steady wins the race, smooth is fast. Um, just kind of anticipate what you're going to have to do coming around these curves. Don't make any sudden movements, and you're going to be just fine. Especially, you know, today I'm not too worried about ice, but the road is wet. You know, there's always the potential for ice to be up here. It is only 29 degrees. Um, so just smooth winds. Um, and it keeps your passengers comfortable and you comfortable. It keeps you from really having to hold on tight to the steering wheel or hit the brakes uh, quickly. All right, guys, so we are in Black Hawk, Colorado. Um, like I mentioned earlier, it's just a little old mining town. Um, not really a whole lot to see here. It's just kind of a fun drive to get up. Now, we do have a couple casinos and stuff that you can visit when you come pick up your coach. There is actually a KOA campground up here as well. So you could drive your coach up here, stay up here, explore the mining town, you're in the mountains, you get some great view, views, get to see some wildlife. And then all along this little main street, we've got cool little shops, restaurants, um, just kind of a fun place to come visit that is not too far from the dealership. Like I said earlier, we've been driving for maybe 45 minutes um, and here we are. So Renegade Explorer has a 52 degree wheel cut. So we're gonna make a left-hand turn, fairly narrow area here. Now, there's no shame in using all the space available when it comes to driving these coaches through small areas. Um, on test drives and when I'm out with customers, I always tell them, if the space is there, use it. If you have to swing into another lane and it's safe to do so, why risk damaging your motorhome to save your pride? So we're climbing out of Black Hawk here. Um, now this is kind of one of my favorite ways to drive super seas and it's just kind of this low and slow crawl climbing out these steep hills in the mountains. Um, we're heading back towards I-70 and we'll show you some more kind of upgrade or uh, climbing hills, going down hills, just some more references for you while you're doing your shopping and uh, research on what these coaches are really capable of when it comes to climbing hills and going down hills. So I mentioned earlier that I do not shift these coaches when I'm trying to climb hills. Now going down the hill, I have a completely different method that actually works very well for me and this is just something I've kind of learned over time of driving across these mountains. So when I'm coming down these big steep grades, so right here we got a sign that says 6% grade next mile. Now I don't want to sit here and ride my brakes and heat them up and risk them failing and that is a big potential when you get hot air brakes. So what I like to do is downshift this coach into fourth gear and then i ride on the cascadia chassis with a dd13 i put my engine brake in medium now what that does is it sets me right at about 45 miles an hour and i can sit here and maintain this without doing any work i'm just letting the engine slow me down letting the transmission slow me down i'm not hitting the brakes and i'm gonna ride 45 miles all 45 miles an hour all the way down this hill, 6% grade, without ever touching the brakes. Now, 45 seems slow, but on these big hills where we've got sharp curves at the bottom, slow and steady wins a race. I'm still maintaining the flow of traffic, not of the traffic, you know, vehicles, but of trucks that are past or coming down this hill. They are limited to 45 miles an hour, so I am maintaining that without working myself or putting myself in a stressful situation where I need to brake hard when I come to these sharp curves. Still, running around these curves, I had a 45 mile an hour curve, and now this is a 50 mile an hour curve, and I have not touched the brakes yet. 
Um, just a little bit of advice and something I've learned. It works in both Class A's and Super C's. Um, just a great little tri or trick for driving down these hills in the mountains. Going back to kind of safety and just operating vehicles in the mountains, especially with air brakes and just being familiar with procedures and emergency stuff, drivers training. So when we're coming down these big hills in the mountains, um, engine brakes are just the best thing in the world because it prevents your brakes from heating up and failing on you. So all the way down these hills though, you're gonna see signs for runaway truck ramps. Now a runaway truck ramp, for those of you who are not familiar with mountains, um, is basically gonna be some kind of cut off off the road, very, very well marked, and you're gonna hit either very, very deep sand, very, very deep gravel. There's usually some barriers at the end that are gonna have more sand or water in them. Um, and basically what's gonna happen is if for some reason your brakes failed, so like right now, we're going down a 6% grade for six miles. If I sat here and rode my brakes the entire time, odds are they'd be on fire by the time I hit the bottom of the hill and they'd be absolutely useless to me. So they give you runaway truck ramps as an emergency situation. Um, I wish I had a way that I could demonstrate one without probably trashing a 2023 RV. Um, but basically, for those of you who are not used to driving in the mountains, become very familiar with where your runaway truck ramps are. They're gonna be on your large grades going downhill. And know that if you have an emergency, you always have that option to hit one. So another great feature of this Garmin navigation system that these Renegades come standard with is it really improves your situational awareness. So I'm just driving along here and I get a little beep from the dash and I look down at the radio and it tells me steep grade ahead. Now, is it that crucial? No, because we have a lot of road signs. But if I'm on an unfamiliar road and I have a little bit of a warning and an opportunity to start slowing down prior to hitting the crest of that hill, it really helps. Great safety feature by Garmin, uh, standard on our 2023 Renegades. All right, guys, going back to this Garmin screen and all the things that it does. Um, so just driving along, got another audible warning out of the speakers, and now it is telling me that there's a lateral wind ahead. So basically what that means is at some point here, I'm gonna get hit by a crosswind. Um, great situational awareness given to us by that Garmin navigation screen. Uh, really helps me know what to expect and when to expect it. So guys, when you buy a coach from TransWest Truck Trailer RV in Frederick, Colorado, within 45 minutes, you can be looking at scenery like this in your new motorhome. Now, it's even more fun in the winter, but if you come and pick it up during the summer, you don't have to worry about ice and snow and rain and all that fun stuff. Uh, just a really, really cool experience. I can tell you a dozen places to go camping within an hour of the shop. So you can come out, pick up your coach, take it on a few day trip up in the mountains somewhere, do some fishing, do some hiking, whatever you're into. And then if you have any problems while you're out, you can swing back by the dealership, we'll take care of them and away you go. Okay, so we've made it out of the mountains. We're coming down this last little uh, descent here, back onto I-70 eastbound make it back to the dealership here in just a little bit now we'll do a couple more things before we make it back to the dealership but overall uh, driving this coach through the mountains is probably one of the most pleasurable coaches I've ever driven great power uh, engine brake works like a champ and just smooth and steady now another thing that this Cascadia has over the M2s is it actually has a bigger set of tires on it now I didn't really think about this going into this video but I noticed on these rutted mountain roads, I get yanked around a lot less with this big, these big Cascadia tires over those smaller M2 tires. Um, just kind of things that I've observed while doing this drive, and we'll get you some more information shortly. Okay, so this is kind of exciting, and we just thought about doing this, but we're just gonna show you some of TransWest facilities. So there's two buildings right here, those two big white buildings, and there's actually a third one getting ready to go in. Now, that is ATTP, all truck and trailer parts, and TransLease, which is a big leasing company we do for commercial leasing in uh, trucks. So ATTP is a huge parts warehouse, okay? So we have everything from a belt to full motors sitting in that warehouse. 
That way, if our customers ever have an issue, we can generally source parts and have them at any one of our dealerships within an hour or two to get you back on the road. And I'm, when we get back to the dealership, we'll talk about some of the other cool stuff that TransWest does that benefits you. Okay, so this is TransWest facility number three. Now this is our two HQ buildings. So this first one on the right side here, we have the TransWest trailer division. Now, this is where we sell commercial trailers for semi trucks. The other thing that happens there is we actually have a body shop that is capable of working on trucks, RVs, uh, trailers, basically anything can be handled in our body shop there. This next door is the actual service department. So this is a massive Freightliner and Western Star dealer. We're gonna go ahead and pull in. Now, little known fact about Transbus, while we are a very big dealer, we are still family owned. We still have uh, the two owners who work here basically six days a week. And this is our main headquarters building. So we have a couple of different service departments here, as well as uh, truck sales, fleet truck sales, all sorts of different things going on around here. So we're kind of pulling around to the medium duty service department. Now for our RV customers, you won't ever really come to this facility. The facility that we actually sell RVs out of, um, while not as big, has all the same capabilities that this one has. All right, so before we continue on with this driving, we wanted to talk about kind of the TransWest culture as well as just Freightliner in general. So TransWest actually started as a Freightliner dealership prior to being an RV dealership. So we aren't just some mom and pop RV shop that can't work on anything. We have to outsource all of our chassis work. No, we are a true one-stop shop. We can order you this coach, which is a 2023 Renegade Classic. When it gets here, we can do a full PDI on it. If it's got a check engine light, we can check it, we can fix it. At any one of our service centers, we can do anything from changing the oil to changing a motor. And that is one big benefit that you get as be for being a TransWest customer. Um, I mentioned earlier in the video, ATTP. We, no kidding, have brand new motors sitting in crates there just waiting for a customer to need it. Now, generally our RV customers aren't the people who need it, it's our truck customers, but TransWest has that unique capability of being able to have a brand new motor for this coach in less than two hours. So I'm a personally a huge fan of Freightliners, um, whether it be a Freightliner Cascadia, M2, Columbia, Coronado, some of our older stuff, we still get those coaches in on trade all the time. And even some of the older coaches are just still incredibly built and they drive better than some of the new chassis that we see rolling off from other manufacturers. Now, just while we're here and have a little bit of time, I just want to talk about that Detroit Assurance package that is standard on our Freightliner Cascadia from Renegades. So we're going to start over on our right side. I mentioned that blind spot monitoring while we were driving. That is going to be this black box right here. Now guys, I just drove this coach 125 or so miles in wind, rain, and snow, so it's not clean right now. But this right here will guaranteed save you from at least one accident because you can see how tall this window is up here i'm six feet tall and it's over my head by quite a bit if there's a small sedan sitting right here and you're in that driver's seat you will not be able to see that car here that is why we have this blind spot monitoring the hood mirror and then this mirror that points down from up above moving forward to the front of the coach We've got this little black square rectangle right there. That is also part of our Detroit Assurance package. So that is going to be our adaptive cruise control. As a reminder, that adaptive cruise control does go to zero, so you can actually use it in stop and go traffic, unlike most adaptive cruise control systems. And then last but not least on that Detroit Assurance package, up in the windshield, you're gonna see a small camera lens. That camera lens is your lane departure warning system. So basically that camera is reading your distance between the lines on the road. And if you get too far to one side or the other, it'll go ahead and give you that audible warning. Now, while we're here, we're just gonna go ahead and open this hood up and take a look at this DD13. I know I've said it a couple times, but 505 horsepower, 1,850 foot-pounds of torque. 
So another benefit to Super C's, I mentioned it earlier, is safety having all this structure and frame rail up in front of us, so we're not gonna be the first one to an accident. Serviceability though. For us, when we start to do a pre-trip, we wanna check and make sure that we have transmission oil. There's our transmission oil dipstick. Your air dryer right up front here. That is going to be a maintenance item. You don't do it often, but you do have to change that out. And being able to do it yourself rather than pay a technician really makes the RVing experience a lot more fun. Coming around to the driver's side. I mentioned pre-trips. So before you take off on any long journey, you wanna check all your major fluids, right? So very easy to check my power steering fluid. We've got a clear container there with marked lines of where it needs to be. Engine oil dipstick, right there. Coolant, right there. Huge coolant canister there, or container there. Um, with clearly marked lines of where the fluid level needs to be. And then engine oil fill if we need it. So that's basically your pre-trip, not including things like checking your tires. Now this coach does have tire pressure monitoring built into it, but I still recommend before you take off on a trip, just go hit them with the uh, air gauge, make sure you're good to go. guys so that is pretty much going to wrap up my driving test of this 2023 renegade classic 38 csb um, honestly one of my favorite floor plans we're going to follow this video up by doing a live walkthrough and i'm going to walk you through all the storage all the features everything um, that we covered in this video and more in a full video walkthrough um, i've said it many times in videos but if i was buying a motorhome you could guarantee that it was going to be a renegade um, in one of my videos, I even did one specifically because I was trying to convince my wife to let me buy a Renegade, but it was a 2004, and uh, yeah, I just I just absolutely love them. Um, the 2023 Renegade Classic on the Cascadia P4 chassis drives just incredibly. Um, one of the more pleasurable coaches that I've ever been able to take out on a test drive. I want to thank you guys for your time. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And if you have any questions, please feel free to give me a call. Again, my name is Brian Moritz with TransWest Truck Trailer RV in Frederick, Colorado. My phone number is 303-482-6375. Thank you guys so much, and we will see you next time.